best day to be in the presence of you all and the Lord. I love, I love the scripture that says, this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And so, Father, I've already prayed, but, Father, I thank you right now that the eyes of our understanding are being enlightened. I thank you, Father, that you awakened us this morning to hear as the learned. I thank you, Father, that our hearts are open to receive the word of the Lord today. And I give you praise and I give you glory for what you have begun within us. You will complete it. And I thank you, Father, that we can co-labor with you today. I give you praise and I give you glory. I'm excited about this year, no matter what they are saying, because I don't know what the year holds, but I do know who hold the year. And so because I know you hold the year, God, it's all going to be all right. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This morning, um, I wanted to do all that I feel like the Spirit of the Lord has put into my heart to do. Um, and it's so funny because I purposely uh, didn't say anything to anyone because when it's a God thing, God takes care of everything. And so it's so it's so. I, I, it so overjoyed my heart because the songs were right on time. I was talking to Pastor April. It was right on time. And I'm going, you know what? Can't nobody do you like Jesus. And the thing of it is, is that, is that every year we start this, this New Year's resolution or whatever you want to call it. But, but it really is a time where we should sit down and reflect over the past year. And if you don't like where you have ended up, then you should change some things. Because the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different result. And so what I'm finding out is that you know, if, if our young people would allow the elders of their lives to speak into their lives, a lot of things that my daddy and my mommy tried to tell me, I really could have avoided. But I thought I knew everything. But I'm finding it's okay because I realize now that I just walk along and throw the seed and keep pushing. You throw the seed and keep pushing. You throw the seed and you keep pushing. And, and you just don't know how the seed comes up, except it falls into the darkness and germinates. And then when you look up, that blade of grass has busted through the concrete. So that's how the seed of God's word works. And so this year, um, uh, this message came about because uh, at, at work on my job, uh, uh, we, uh, I've been there long enough now where I get like three weeks vacation. And they had said, uh, as I was standing at the front desk, uh, my uh, boss, who we play with each other and love each other, and she said, she said uh, out of her mouth, she said, uh, I said, oh, yeah, man, vacation is starting again. Woohoo! And she said, uh, well, we just hope you don't spend it in the hospital. Well, my thing of it is, is for when I first got it, that's what I did. <laughs> that's exactly what I did. And then the next year, that's exactly what I did. And I said, the devil is a lie. We're not doing that. But it's so interesting. I had sat down. I had taken some vacation. And uh, it was going into the new year. And right after Christmas, and I was sitting in my recliner, and, and I was just sitting there in my time alone. And it's so funny because, because I'm at this such peace in God that 
position where I used to think position was necessary for God to hear you. I realized that God hears you wherever, you know, on the toilet, in the shower, you know. He, he ain't got no shame. You know, he just ends up everywhere. David said, I can't go nowhere that your presence ain't there. So, hey, you know. And, and realizing he made all of this. But anyway, as I was sitting there in my chair that morning, um, and it was, it was leading up to New Year's because I, w- I had taken off vacation. And I was sitting in the chair and in, kind of in my quiet time, and, and I heard the, this, the, 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 the Spirit of God say to me, I miss your voice. And I said, oh, wow. Really? He said, I miss your voice. And I said, okay. And so the Spirit of God began to minister to me, and I said, okay, Lord, I, 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 I want to know how you want me to do this because I don't, I don't move in prayer the way that I used to move in prayer. So I'm more meditative now. And and in the midst of that, this is what the Spirit of the Lord dropped in my heart as I was just sitting there in my chair. And it came to me out of 3rd John. As I'm sitting in my chair, we're going to talk about that. 3rd John. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper. And be in health as your soul prospereth. And when the Spirit of God said that to me, I took it and I said, Lord, thank you. I'm going to believe this for myself, for my family, for Cornerstone family, for office family, for everybody that is connected to me. I receive this as the word of the Lord for the year. Third John. John is talking to Gainus. And what I love about this is that this is not, this is not, this is John praying for his friend. Gainus is working in the ministry, and he has the ministry of hospitality, and people are coming through, and he's putting them up, and he's feeding them, and he's taking care of them. And all of a sudden, John hears about his friend. The word's been carried back to him, what all that Gainus is doing by hospitality. And, and, and John says, you know what? Because you are doing this, I'm going to pray this over you. And this is what I like about it. In in Job, it says, and you shall decree a thing. Oh, you don't hear me this morning. See, we keep trying to, uh, what I'm finding out is that, is that, is that I love it because God keeps on allowing me and you, but I can talk about me, to co-labor with him. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Because listen, God is sovereign. Don't get it, don't get it twisted. But God has also set it up that we come in and become co-laborers or ambassadors or represent Christ to others. Oh, y'all don't hear me. You saying what? Well, so, so the scripture says that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. So what is God saying to me? God is saying to me, I miss your requesting. I I miss you not standing in the gap. I miss you not calling out their names around the throne room. Because if you go over and look in the book of Revelation, it tells you that the prayers of the saints arise as an aroma. Oh, y'all don't hear me this morning. As an aroma unto the Lord, and when the bowl is full, God turns it out and brings the blessing. 
Some of us, the Bible says in James, you have not. That's what I'm sitting there letting God minister to me. You have not. Why? Because you ask not. You're murmuring and complaining about what somebody else got. But you won't ask me for what you want. And what I found out, God is not dealing with me as a robot. He said to me, ask. Oh, y'all don't hear me. See, and I used to try to fix it. I'm going, I'm going to move there. I used to try to fix it to where? Listen. Well, he'll put the desires in your heart. On one hand, yes. But that would still be <coughs> a little bit of manipulation. God chose it in himself to give Adam and Eve free will in the garden, even though he saw ahead and knew they were going to mess up. But did he take their free will from them? All right, come on here. Now, why would he create me and give me a free will and then have to manipulate me into what I desire? What God does is you walk so close with him that the heartbeat becomes one. And because the heartbeat is one, you have desires that are in line with the word of God. So this prayer was, is right on for the year. Because I'm at, I, look, when he said that, I said, you know what? You drop this in my heart. And I'm not speaking and believing. I'm saying what David said. I believe, therefore have I spoken. What, 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 what are you believing God for this year? Is it just another year of haps and mishaps and ups and downs and... I, I said, Lord, what does that look like? I want to be healthy, wealthy, and very wise. I want to get up every day and feel good. See, if I hadn't tried some of these things and experienced some of these things, talking about the blood of Jesus, I done pleaded the blood of Jesus over joints and things and felt better. You're too late. You should have told me before he did the magic or the, or the miracle. So as I'm sitting there, and I'm reading this, and he says, beloved, you are my beloved. In other words, this beloved means, as I would write to my dear friend. See, because at the beginning of the year, <laughs> people don't realize it, but they be blessing at the beginning of the new year. Everybody. Don't matter if they drink, drunk, high, twisted, blind, crippled, crazy. What are you saying, Marcia? Because what comes out of their mouth is happy. Better help me. Happy. A part of happy is blessed. Bless. Have a blessed new year. Have a blessed. And I ain't talking about gathering material. Have a blessed new year in the quantitative things of God. Go deeper in him. So what was God saying? God is saying, I need you to come in a little bit closer this year. I mean, all oh, that's good. Because I'm back, I write my prayers down. You know why I write them down? So when I go, when he answers, I can go back and go check. So John is saying here, I've heard about what you're doing. Now, I want to pray for you. I love this because the Bible says, pray ye for one another. Pray. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper. I looked up this word, to prosper. And this word prosper appears 90 times in scripture. And what it means is to have a continued success 
of what you are doing. I think we have made God so spiritual that we don't understand that he is a part of our natural everyday life. To have a continual success. The year may look the same. The routine may be the same. But hopefully somewhere in there you are growing in your spiritual knowledge of even who you are. I started dealing with this. I did, I, I, my, the vision board that came together just blew my mind. Because I started thinking about uh, uh, the essence of who God is. And I was like, let me, let me go to the dictionary and get a clear, a really good understanding of this word essence because it's 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 this essence of who God is is literally in us and the more that I get in touch with the God in me the more you and I tap into the spirit of God in me I, I haven't I haven't quite meditated enough on this is the temple of the Lord. You, 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 you could dwell anywhere, but you said I don't dwell in man-made buildings. When we leave the building, God's left the building. Oh, y'all don't hear me. But God goes everywhere you go, whether you recognize it or not, because he said, you are my temple. I mean, just sit on that. And so when we, when we gather when we gather on on Sundays, what what it, it, what what's being what's hitting you in your spirit? What's jumping out that you can eat on this week? I, I love what Pastor April did with with affirmation. See, if I didn't know, look, I ain't bringing you nothing I haven't tried. Everything I'm talking about, look, God has allowed me to experience. So when I come, I know that I know that I know. So I f didn't realize that this was so much of a prophetic message until I've got a, something I want you to read. Because when I started putting the board together, I, um, what I do, what I do is I get magazines and I usually get Afrocentric magazines. Uh, they speak my culture. And when I got through cutting out things, I was like, look at God. Everything you're telling me to believe you for a year, not just a year, but this, but, but do you understand? I've got to get specific. This is what he's saying to me for 2024. Believe me to be healthy this year. My vision board. Because I didn't realize it. word. I, there's a few prophets that I've been uh, following and listening to because, because God didn't actually give me uh, a particular pr uh, prophetic voice to help me discern and hone the gifting that's in me. It's just been by his spirit. And so what God will do is when you don't have a person that can mentor you, God develops other ways to mentor you. And some of the ways can be through books, 
It can be through teaching so that you can grasp what God is needing. So this is a young guy that I've been following for the last couple of years um, and going back and tracing the word of the Lord that was given to him. And uh, he prophesied, uh, uh, along with several other people, prophesied COVID way back in, you know, before 2000. You know, so this, this young man has been very accurate. And so I didn't realize this until my, uh, as I was putting this together on um, Monday, one of my coworkers came and I had said to them earlier, as I was, I work up front, I was answering the phone and we had so many patients that was calling and counseling me because they were sick. They were congested. They were, and they didn't, and some of them didn't even know what they had. They just felt horrible, and they stopped giving out all these antibiotics because the antibiotics are not working. And then this young lady brought this word to me, and I was like, God, you will help us out in the midst of it. And so this is, uh, um, his name is Joshua Giles Ministry. You can find him on YouTube. He has, he has uh, books out. He's a young cat. But this is what he's saying. He said, there is much sickness going around, some that has not been named, targeting respiratory and other systems within the body. We are seeing viral and bacterial pathogens that are spreading rapidly, and more that is coming. Some are resistant to medication due to the aggressive mutation. Build your immune system now. Minimize dairy, reduce meat and processed food, and other mucus producers. Use the wisdom of the Lord. Anoint yourself and your house. Apply the blood of Jesus Christ to yourself and your family. The glory of the Lord will be your defense. When I saw that, I was like, okay. It may not matter to, to other people, but because I keep into the prophetic, it, it, mattered, a, it mattered a lot to me. And so this is what I, I, wanted to, I wanted to share something because I don't know if you need to get quiet with God and ask God what is he saying to you. I, I'm believing this for you. I ain't asking you to come alongside. <laughs> I, when, when God dropped it, I said, I, you've given me the faith for this. When the word of the Lord comes, there is faith already on the word that he drops. All I got to do is walk it out. Do you see what I'm saying? And I told him when he gave it to me, I said, you know I'm praying this over everybody that I know. Because I do believe the prayers of the righteous avail as much. I, I believe that. I believe that God hears me when I pray. Because I done seen too many answered prayers. I ain't boasting or bragging. I'm just telling you facts. I've seen too, I've seen too many prayers answered, which delights me. So to prosper means to have continued success. It means to thrive. It means to grow. It means to flourish. It means to have wealth and good fortune. To have a good and safe journey. How much of, how much of stuff we take it, take it for granted? You know what else I found out too? Sometimes just sit down and write down what you're grateful for. I wanted to, after this, after I read this prophetic word, I wanted to bring some clarity because Sometimes when we hear a prophetic word, we don't know how to really steward it. And there is a difference in hearing a prophetic word and then for someone to stand in the office of the prophet and bring a predictive word. And it's so neat because the body of Christ, and, and, and the thing of it is, is that it may not all pertain to you, but what part of it does? 
I'm out in the public. <laughs> so, and, and that was the thing I asked. I said, um, do I need to start wearing a mask again? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm participating. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm asking him. Because this brother has already prophesied about the, 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 the uh, um, modification of food that's making us sick. The FDA has approved it, some of it. Genetically modified meats. They're in our grocery stores now. And you're going, it's not to go in scary. And, and, and the thing of it is, I was going to give you these scriptures so that you can study these on your own. I, I want to give you this particular scripture. In 1 Corinthians 14, 31, it declares all can prophesy. But a prophet is a watchman. A watchman is someone that is watching what God is doing. And that's, that's kind of what I've done. That's how I was raised up. I, I start to watch. I start to tune in. And when I see things that's continually generating and generating and generating, then I start to do my own research. Then I start to ask, okay, Lord, is this, is this, is this right? Because I've had God deal with me where he's given me warnings, where he's given me directions. Go here, go there. Don't do this. Don't say nothing. This is going to happen. That is going to happen. That's the difference in just general prophecy. It's a predictive prophecy. And I want to give you Acts 11, 28, and 30 where Agabus gave a prediction. And he told them, that there was going to be a phantom, famine that was coming up on the land. And what did they do? They acted on it, took up an offering, and began to send it out. There was another uh, uh, prophet in the book of Acts that came down when Paul was getting ready to go and took off his belt and girdle and told Paul what was going to happen. And almost, I almost think about it, now, was it his choice to go or not? Or was God just warning him, when you go down there, be aware that this is going to happen. Jesus said, I've already told you these things so that when they happen, you won't be surprised. Saints of God, we don't have to be caught off guard. We don't have to be caught off guard. And for me, my hope, this, this, my, my hope and participation is every day, I'm going to feel good with lots of energy. Look out. Just because I'm like, to me, God, why would you give me that? Why would you give me this word? Then he comes along and confirms why he gave me the word. So, I want to let you understand that in General prophecy, it speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort. But it also, I, I, uh, I found the definition where it goes deeper than that. It, it, it also means a calling near. It means to summons the people. And yes, I'm going to ask it. Yeah, I'm going to ask it. I'm, I'm just bold enough to do that. At the beginning of the year or sometime in your year throughout, what are you willing to sacrifice to hear from God? Are you willing to turn the plate down one meal? Are you willing to turn off the electronics? Are you willing to shut the TV off and spend an hour reading and meditating, what is your sacrifice? How bad do you want to hear from God? I believe God was asking me for a sacrifice this time.
What's your sacrifice? What's your offering to the Lord? We always wanted something that don't cost us nothing. And yet, I hear you, Lord. I hear you and see you. When Cornelius, for all his household to be saved, the man, the angel of the Lord said to him, your alms giving and your prayers has come up for a memorial before the Lord. What's your memorial? What is your memorial? God is good. Yes, he's good. But what are you willing to lay down to hear a word from the Lord? What are you willing to sacrifice to say, I know that you have already healed me, but I'm willing to fast and sow for this thing to come to manifestation in my life. What is your sacrifice? What's your memorial before God? Mm. Mm. Wow, I, I hear we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. David said, I can't give him something that didn't cost me something. So what you bring in, did it cost you something? Because that's what a sacrifice is. And the thing of it is, is that we don't think we have to do that no more. But I'm here to tell you today by the prophetic word of the Lord, God is asking us for a sacrifice. Jesus said, can you not tarry one hour? Can you, you, you can't sit with me one hour, but you can watch and bling out Jesus, don't go there. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. Come on, back up. <laughs> You're a little hard today. Come on. Come on. You can, you can scroll for three and four hours. You can play Candy Crush for five and six hours. Your, your, your iPad comes on and tells you your, your, uh, your iPad has been up. Your, your watching has been up 17% today. My God, Jesus, have mercy. And and, and what do I have to show for God? And then we get mad because we're not seeing the manifestation and the presence of God in our lives like we really want. Yet you, you see the manifestation, just not what you want. It's the Candy Crush. It's the movies. It's the Netflix. It's the Tubies. Everybody getting ready for the Super Bowl. Hello, somebody. They got the chicken wings on the stove. They, they got the beer ready. I ain't knocking you. They got the veggies ready. Everything is ready. Folk won't go to church if you have a 3 o'clock service on Super Bowl Sunday. I know us, uh, my, my culture, my culture. Uh, they had, they'll, they'll tell you, uh, Pastor, we need to be out by such and such a time because it's Super Bowl Sunday. My, 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 But what about God on Super Bowl Sunday? Super Bowl Sunday might be the Sunday that you get your supernatural miracle. Mm. We bring a sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. 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 Take your judgment self somewhere and sit down. Can't look at somebody without judging. I don't know about you, but I got to prosper. I got to be in health. You know why? Because my soul is prospering. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I got the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. His thoughts and his feelings and the very purpose of his heart. In him I move, I live, and have my being. Mm. 
You bring a sacrifice. What's your sacrifice this week? What's your sacrifice? You know why we sleep? Because we haven't brought a sacrifice. You haven't brought anything to God that has cost you anything. I'm talking about myself. Don't, don't get it twisted. What have we brought to God that cost us something? Oh, God. God is a good God. But how many of you know, every now and then I get tired of my kids coming to me just because they want something. Sometimes I just want you to come to me because you love me. Every time I look, you want your hand out. How about just hanging out with me for who I am? How about just hanging out with God for who he is? And I grant you and I bet you and I declare over you, it will not be a hard week if you take this week and sacrifice. Sacrifice. My God. Woo! I don't know what yours is going to be. That ain't my business. But it need to cost you something. If it don't cost you nothing, it's no sacrifice. Our freedom in Christ cost Christ everything. Salvation wasn't free. It cost him everything. It was free for me. But it cost Christ everything. He became the sacrificial lamb. Listen, I want to end. Can you put on some, some of that music we just heard? I like that, that last song. You can just roll it. I, I told, I, I was telling, as I'm sitting there at the house and, 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 and I'm, I'm talking and listening to the Lord, and I said, this is the first Sunday of the year. How about we, the Bible says in James, is there any among you that afflicted? Let him, is there any among you that's, that's uh, struggling, let him do this. And then he says, if they're sick, let them call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint you and pray in faith. We're going to anoint today. Would you come and give pass out? And we're going to take communion. Because when I thought about this, When I thought about this, Arlene, would you get the communion tray? When I thought about this, I said, as we take communion today, it's a remembering of who or what Christ did for us. And it's like, Father, if I have unbelief, help thou my unbelief because I really want to remember. Because your word says, as often as ye do this, remember me. So as we drink of this blood and eat of this body, it brings forth healing and we don't have a full revelation of the healing that was in the blood. Because my thinking has been so small. But I really want God to elevate it because, listen, listen, life is truly in the blood. People's, I can, I can understand this when they say, the blood cries out. When Christ's blood came down, the earth began to have convulsions because the blood of this man or the life of who he was was in his blood. Somehow spiritually, that's got to get in our DNA. Because God really does want us to represent him here. Uh, you ain't got to go to heaven. You represent, bring heaven here. People talking about the kingdom. The kingdom of God has always been in existence. 
the door has always been open. Christ opened the door, rented the veil from top to bottom, gave you and I access. I don't have to work to get access to the Father. I'm already in the room. I'm in the room. I'm in the room. I'm in the room. You're in the room. So I want us to get this. Just give me a few minutes, please. When you get it, just anoint yourself. Yes, please. Just anoint. <laughs> ah. I, I, I've been listening and reading, and I, I, when, when, when you hear certain things, it opens up your heart and your mind. And one of the things that I heard a brother say that quickened me was how the church quickly embraced death instead of life. And when I started to do my research on it just from the Bible, I was reading the book of Acts on yesterday. And the lady by the name of Darkus who died. And Peter wasn't that far away. And the Bible says that the women wiped her body down. She was a maker of purple and all of that. They wiped her body down later in the upper chambers somebody heard that peter was down the road they sent for peter peter comes in and the women that are showing darkness is what she's made they weeping and wailing peter puts them out of the room peter kneels down and prays and then once he prays the bible says peter says tabitha come forth and Tabitha came forth. Then the Spirit of God used to took me back and started showing me how Paul was stoned to death, but they gathered around him, and God raised him back up. There are many instances in the Bible that these people died, but God raised them back to life. So the thing of it is, it's like pulling off the dead man clothes, pulling off death. We all going to transition. Jesus said, <laughs> you, you're going to be changed. But it's embracing the life. Jesus said, I come to give you life and life more abundantly. Have y'all had y'all's abundance of life? Father, I just thank you that the anointing is just a contact to release your faith. A contact to release faith. Believe God for your healing. Continue. Tell him you haven't had the manifestation you thought you was going to have, so what do I do? What, am, is, it, is it me? Or is it Memorex? I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm ending. I'm, I'm getting ready to turn 70 in May. But I, I'm going to be a bad 70. <laughs> you ain't got to already today, Mandy. <laughs> because I realize I can mature in age. But I can still be young at heart. And I'm going to wear my heels as long until I'm 99 and a half. And 100 will do. I want to read this scripture and then we're going to drink this. We're going to have communion. Amen.
Thank you. Let me read this over you, and we're going to have communion. Psalms 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. How many of you know we're there? Because we're in Christ. So we're in the secret place. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver me and you from the snare of the fowler and from the pestilence. He shall cover me and you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day. I decree this over you, no the pestilence that walk in darkness, nor the destruction that lay waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come nigh you. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the rewards of the wicked. But you have made the Lord, who is your refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. I decree over you, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come nigh your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lions and the cobras, the young lions and the serpents. You shall trample underfoot. Look what God says to us. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. That's the word of the Lord. 